This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Dozens of Palestinians have been killed after Israel resumed its bombardment of Gaza, ending a week-long pause to facilitate the exchange of captives. Hamas responded by firing a salvo of rockets towards southern Israel. The U.N. says the resumption of violence puts thousands of innocent lives at risk. Since the October 7th Hamas attack, the Israeli bombardment has killed over 15,000 Palestinians, including 6,100 children. Israel's expanded its military campaign to target southern areas of Gaza, where Israeli planes have been dropping leaflets warning people to evacuate areas around Khan Yunus, warning the city was now a dangerous battle zone. Israel previously expelled hundreds of thousands of people from the northern Gaza Strip to the south. Just hours before the truce expired, Residents of Khan Yunis searched through the rubble of their former homes for any personal items they could salvage. The end of the calm today feels like our execution. They are telling us that today is the last day of the ceasefire, and we have 24 hours before we return to a life of sheltering in schools in squalor, with the hardship of life without water, electricity, or proper shelter. We want a complete truce, not being told every day there is a truce only to have it breached. Israel's renewed assault on Gaza came after Israel and Hamas completed a seventh exchange of captives. On Thursday, eight Israelis held by Hamas were released, while 30 Palestinians were freed from Israeli jails. Israel's government says it believes Hamas still holds 137 hostages kidnapped during the October 7th attacks. Newly freed Palestinians report suffering torture and sexual assault. The situation in the prisons is devastating. The prisoners are abused. They're being constantly beaten. They're being sexually assaulted. They're being raped. I'm not exaggerating. The prisoners are being raped. Earlier this week, U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres called for an investigation into reports of sexual violence committed by Hamas on October 7th. Israeli government officials knew Hamas was planning a large-scale attack on Israel more than a year ago, but failed to respond to specific warnings about the plot after dismissing it as aspirational. That's according to an explosive report in The New York Times, which says Israeli officials intercepted a 40-page battle plan by Hamas detailing how its attack would play out, a blueprint Hamas closely followed October 7th. Meanwhile, Another explosive new report by Plus 972 magazine details how Israel is using artificial intelligence to draw up targets in Gaza and how Israel's loosened its constraints on attacks likely to kill civilians. One former intelligence officer described the plan as a, quote, mass assassination factory. After headlines, we'll go to Jerusalem to speak with the Israeli investigative reporter Yuval Abraham, who broke the story. In Arizona, 26 people were arrested Thursday as protesters peacefully blockaded a Raytheon manufacturing hub in Tucson, demanding an end to U.S. arms transfers to Israel. One protester said, quote, we're outraged that more than 15,000 Palestinians have been killed while companies like Raytheon continue to fill their coffers with blood money, unquote. Among those arrested was journalist Alyssa Resnick of public radio station KJZZ. She was arrested by Pima County Sheriff's deputies, even as she carried recording equipment and repeatedly identified herself as press. MSNBC is facing a torrent of backlash after announcing it's canceling The Mehdi Hassan Show. The British-born journalist is known for holding powerful figures to account and is one of the most powerful Muslim voices on American television. Following the news, Congress member Elhan Omar said, quote, it's deeply troubling that MSNBC is canceling his show amidst a rampant rise of anti-Muslim bigotry and suppression of Muslim voices, she said. Journalist Ryan Grimm said, quote, Mehdi's style of confrontational interviews in which he doesn't let public figures get away with lies or half-true talking points turned him into a celebrated journalist in the U.K. His show's cancellation is such a pathetic indictment of the U.S. media, Grimm said.
Mehdi Hassan show has been welcomed as one of the few on mainstream networks to question Israel's narrative over its attacks on Gaza. Earlier the, last month, Hassan interviewed Mark Regev, a senior advisor to Prime Minister Netanyahu. I have seen lots of children with my own lying eyes being pulled from the rubble. Not because so, they're the you pictures don't... Hamas wants you to see. Exactly my point, they're, they're, dead, they're Mark. the pictures also, Hamas wants. But there are also people no. that your government has uh, killed. You accept that, right? You've killed children, or do you deny no, that? No, I do not. I do not. I do not. First of all, you don't know how those people died. Those children. Oh wow. Russia's Supreme Court has banned LGBTQ plus activism in a landmark decision Amnesty International blasted as shameful and absurd. The ruling, which asserts the so-called international LGBTQ movement is extremist, threatens to further endanger already persecuted communities. This is transgender activist Ada Blackwell. I escaped from a conversion camp just over half a year ago. I was kidnapped. They tried to cure me for a year. They tried to convince me that I was not a transgender woman. They failed. De facto, after the adoption of this lawsuit, I will not be able to talk about conversion therapy. It will be forbidden for me, because it will be associated with the LGBT topic. I will not be able to help a large number of people. All trans activists, many queer activists, have already left Russia. I am one of the Last, apparently, who have remained in Russia. What to do next? The only option I know is to leave. The World Meteorological Organization reports 2023 is virtually certain to become the hottest year on record, warning of worsening wildfires, floods, ice melt, heat waves, and other extreme weather events. Since the start of the year, the average global surface temperature is up about 1.4 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, or about 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That's just a tenth of a degree below the target limit of 1.5 degrees set by the Paris Climate Accord in 2015. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres announced the findings Thursday, as the UN's COP28 climate summit got underway in Dubai. We are living through climate collapse in real time, and the impact is devastating. We have the roadmap to limit the rise in global temperature to 1.5 degrees Celsius and avoid the worst of climate chaos. But we need leaders to fire the starting gun at COP28 on a race to keep the 1.5 degree limit alive. Tune into Democracy Now! all next week, when we'll be broadcasting from the COP28 UN Climate Summit in Dubai. The White House has confirmed President Biden will not attend the COP28 summit this year, but that Vice President Kamala Harris will be in attendance. This week, the Biden administration launched an auction to sell $3.4 million in oil and gas drilling leases. It's just the first in a series of auctions that'll take place as COP28 unfolds. Over the next two weeks, the Interior Department will sell off land exploitation rights in Wyoming, New Mexico, Nevada, North Dakota, Oklahoma and Utah. This comes as data from the U.S. Energy Information Administration show the Biden administration surpassed the Trump administration in crude oil production, bringing U.S. production higher than at any other time in history. The Center for Biological Diversity warns Biden's fossil fuel projects, quote, threaten to erase the climate emissions progress from the Inflation Reduction Act. The House of Representatives voting today over whether to expel New York Congress member George Santos, who repeatedly lied about his professional experience, his background, and likely committed multiple violations of campaign finance rules. Santos painted himself as a victim of a smear campaign, refused to resign as he addressed lawmakers Thursday as they debated his future. When this vote is on the floor, it is in the conscience of all of my colleagues that they believe that this is the correct thing to do. So be it. Take the vote. I'm at peace. If ousted, Congressmember George Santos would become just the sixth member of the House ever to be removed by fellow lawmakers. And in California, animal rights activist and attorney Wayne Chung has been sentenced to 90 days in jail after he was found guilty of felony conspiracy and misdemeanor trespassing for rescuing dozens of injured and dying ducks and chickens at two factory farms in Sonoma County, California. The charges stem from peaceful actions at Sunrise Farms and Reicher Duck Farm. Murray Holden, a member of Wayne Chung's legal team, spoke outside the Sonoma County Courthouse after Thursday's sentencing. I believe that this trial will end up 
in the Book of Animal Liberation when that book is written. I'm tremendously grateful to Wayne for the sacrifice that he has made, the injustice of the fact that a human being is being held in a cage for the supposed crime of compassion, for rescuing other sentient, feeling beings from cages, will not be lost on the world. Wayne Shung is the co-founder of Direct Action Everywhere, a global network of animal rights defenders. To see our interviews with him, go to democracynow.org. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.